Hey everybody, this is TC from Vespa Motorsport and Scooter West. Summer's winding down. We've been working on some great projects all summer long. Some fun, some challenging, some a pain in the rear. But the best one we've been working on aesthetically and cosmetically, perhaps in the history of Vespa Motorsport, is a 300 Super that uh, we're just literally putting the finishing details on because it's gonna be picked up in about 20 minutes and it's going back east. Uh, got a call early this summer from Chris Scanlon and uh, he said he wanted uh, 300, it looked a particular way. He sent me a photograph of an old GT200 that had some slight modifications done to it. I told him that's a GT200, we don't make, they don't make those anymore. So we ultimately decided on a 300 and the build began. It started with a few chrome pieces, some blacked out pieces, and it literally continued to grow. The bike you're seeing in front of you, and we're gonna show some real close detail here in a few minutes, and Robot's gonna talk about it, uh, gave us a lot of challenges, uh, presented some creative avenues that we've never pursued before, uh, but it's turned into, I'm gonna say, what, close to an $18,000, $19,000 bike, and he hasn't even registered in his state yet. So he's still got some taxes and some other things to be looking forward to. Uh, that said, uh, Robot is not just clowning around over here. He's actually getting the bike detailed because it's going to be picked up in a few minutes. Uh, wants to talk a little bit about what we did here, some of the challenges, some of the things that the customer wanted, and uh, ultimately how it all came together. This was a team effort. We had four people working on it at one point. Robot, of course, was overseeing the build from uh, A to Z and uh, is pretty happy with how it turned out. When he tells me he's happy, I know he's really happy because he doesn't get impressed all that easily. So Robot, why don't you step in here a little bit, talk about it, and uh, tell everybody what we did. Hey everybody, how's it going? So yeah, just finished this up uh, literally last night and then this morning I just uh, finished up the detailing on it. As you can see, uh, the stellar factor of it is all the chrome work in addition to the, the gloss black and a couple white accents. Um, this isn't the, you know, it's not heavy in the performance modifications, but it's heavy in the custom chroming stuff. On the scooter, I think I counted, is, there's 93 individual parts that we chrome that aren't normally chromed on a Vespa GTS 300 Super. So, yeah, I could kind of go over all the stuff we've done and the bolt-on parts that we've, in some, some regards, we've modified a little further and taken them to the next level beyond the way they come as bolt-on parts. All right, so starting from the front of the scooter, it's got the GTS uh, 30PA windshield, which is like the, the fly screen style windshield. We took it a bit further than the way it normally comes. All this bracketry is normally zinc plated. Took it all apart. Uh, filed all the holes to be a little larger because the chrome plating adds additional uh, thickness to all the metal parts. So the rods, all the little bits of hardware have all been chrome plated on that. So it kind of makes the windshield pop by having the brackets kind of stand out versus the regular kind of uh, satin uh, zinc finish that normally comes on those parts. It's got the original Piaggio leather grips. They're not all that popular of an option, but they're very high quality. The uh, inner tube's all made of aluminum. Um, they have chrome rings on it and they're genuine leather. They hold up quite well. I've installed a couple of those on scooters in the past. We've had them for quite a long time. We have the chrome levers on it. These are uh, easy bolt-on part. I think part number 494097-chrome, something like that. Um, the standard style lever, but in chrome finish. Uh, on the newer GTSs, 2015 and later, they have the chrome bezel, so that complements the whole build very well. Uh, the front bezel and visor, that's an, uh, an extra accessory. Same with the front rack. Normally, that front rack comes on the GTV, as you can see right to the, um, the left. It's a factory part on the GTV. But for the Super and uh, GTS 300s, you can order as a separate replacement part. But put these two small LED spotlights on there, and they actually work pretty good. Kind of, they're a floodlight pattern. They light up the road quite a bit. So they're, they're functional lights. And I can turn those on, show you what they do. Probably blinded the camera right there. But they're pretty nice. I did a little custom wiring with some custom connections. Actually, my tech, Travis, did most of the work. 
Um, I helped him along kind of with the build and specified what needed to be done, but I'm going to give him credit for the majority of the work that's been done on it. Uh, unfortunately, he doesn't like really being on camera, so I'm going to do the talking for him. So he did a great job. Connectors are under here, makes it easy to take off. I mean, unfortunately, when you have lighting, you're going to have to have the associated wiring as well and did some custom wiring for the button as well. Uh, on the front, when I turned it on, it's got the uh, European light kit. That's a very popular option for us. Uh, MI202, and we also sell as a complete kit with the rears. This scooter also has the rear turn signals as well. Yeah, and they're very nice, much nicer than the ones that come on the American market bikes. I mean, these are standard on all the bikes. The GTS is sold in the rest of the world. Going a little bit lower, you can see the most stellar uh, part of it is it's got white wall tires, which complement the black and chrome very well. Uh, sometimes white walls don't work so good on other color combinations. You wouldn't want to put white walls on, I don't know, something really flashy and colorful, but I don't know, some people might. It's just my personal preference. Uh, powder coated those front wheels. Instead of the silver, they're gloss black. You can see all the center hardware is uh, in chrome and they have the chrome button head covers that cover up the, um, the Allen fasteners. Even the valve stems, one of the metal uh, chrome valve stems, so you don't need to replace the rubber valve stem. Going on to the left side of the scooter, it's got a couple extra chrome bits. This is a bolt-on part that we sell, replaces the, the normally just kind of flat black plastic part that's normally there. It's got the Melosi RS24 shocks, which complement the scooter very well as they're black and white and chrome for the rear ones. Um, the big custom part is it's got a chrome brake caliper. Uh, that's not an off the shelf part. I took apart the brand new brake caliper and carefully masked all the critical surfaces where the uh, brake pistons go and the seals all the other little parts, and sent that off for chrome plating. And originally when I did the build, the customer requested that, but I couldn't guarantee that we've done, you know, I've never had any experience chrome plating uh, standard brake calipers. I know there's chrome calipers available for, you know, in the cruiser markets and for Harleys and all that stuff. Um, but I asked my brother who does a lot of big Harley builds, he's more into that kind of scene. This is no big deal, and it worked perfect once I put it all back together, no leaks. Uh, they, they didn't chrome the bores of the, um, that the brake pistons go in, so it works perfect. Just like a factory part, but it's no longer the black finish on it. You can see there's lots of other small chrome fasteners that have replaced you know, the standard black fasteners that would come on a scooter. So I got to get down and low to show you what's going on down here on the engine. Uh, starting up here, these are the standard pegs. I chromed every single part of those pegs. There's quite a few parts to them. And the brackets are all chrome. Normally those are all just zinc plated. So I went ahead and did that. You can see chrome fasteners in there. The aluminum foot peg extenders, which make the scooter much more comfortable for a passenger. You know, they may, may not be the most aesthetically nice thing, but it's night and day for a passenger on this, these scooters if you add those foot peg, foot peg extenders. Went ahead and chromed those as well. So kind of with what we had to go by, that's the best we could make that look. So um, down here is your right hand uh, engine cover and it houses the water pump and stator. If you watch my recent uh, complete overhaul video for the GTS 300, I kind of show you all the magic that goes on behind that cover. Um, went ahead and chromed that whole entire cover. Again, I had to take apart the complete water pump and have the chrome shop mask all the parts that the seals and bearings install into and carefully reassemble it with brand new parts. Um, but it looks great. You know, it's, there's parts way up in there. You don't even see fasteners that are chrome, but it kind of sets it apart, you know. Didn't go as far as chroming the whole engine case. You know, it is possible, but that's kind of going a little overboard, and that's a ton of work to, to do. Uh, the bracketry has all been gloss powder coated. Normally on this PM tuning pipe, this is gold anodized. Uh, the customer opted to have all this stuff blacked out. Same with the wheel, it's identical to the, um, 
the front wheel with the white wall tires in gloss black. If you go a little bit lower, you can see I've chromed the center stand and all the springs that go with it. Uh, last thing that's chromed is there's the oil drain plug. Nah, I just figured to chrome it. I wanted to chrome the oil filter too, but I thought, eh, it kind of doesn't make sense to chrome something that you're going to throw away after a few hundred miles. So kind of skip that. But maybe next batch I'll, I'll chrome another filter and send it to the customer. So he'll at least have 6,000 miles of a chrome oil filter on his next oil change. Be kind of fun. So. so the pipe is manufactured by PM Tuning of uh, England and they make a hand-built uh, pipe. They have a Scamati edition, which is the end cap comes down to a uh, kind of more of a point. This pipe works very well performance-wise as it has a very long header for better torque. Um, you can bolt it onto a stock motor and the fuel injection system will accommodate just fine. Um, normally, this is how you see it. It's just a polished stainless steel part. This isn't chrome plated. So the finish is a little different than the chrome. You can see polished stainless steel has got a little yellow to it versus chrome where it's more of a cold, a cold shiny color. So it's a little bit off, but it's difficult to uh, chrome plate the stainless steel, especially on a complete pipe. Um, I had the shop that did all my chrome plating polish it a little further, especially when it comes to the header. The header normally is just raw stainless steel, so it's kind of a machined uh, finish on it. And you can see they polished it all the way up to where it bolts into the engine. Uh, another side effect to anything that's uh, stainless steel and polished, as it gets warm, it kind of gets a yellow um, tinge. You could see it a little bit in the camera, especially further up on the header. I kind of like that look. It kind of gives a, a gradation, you know, of you know, little little color to the uh, the the shiny finish. And unfortunately, that's just what it happens on chrome. You'll hear about chrome bluing on chromed headers. You know, if you have a chrome steel header, it will blue very close to the engine where the temperatures are high. Uh, titanium does much of the same thing, kind of blues and pink colors that come out when the metal's heated in, you know, out in the open air with the nitrogen and oxygen reacting with the metal. But uh, pretty much a bolt-on part. You could buy it as, it as you see it there. It would look nearly the same with the exception of the header that we went a little further on and polished. So here we got a stock GTS 300. It's got the standard leg shield trim that's reminiscent of all the classic Vespas in an aluminum kind of metallic finish. Uh, next to it, we have a customized uh, 2018 green GTS 300. I did a video of this two months ago. And it's got this, the standard kind of flat finish black plastic trim. On Chris's bike, we want to take it to the next level. You can see the trim has been painted in gloss black to match the rest of the body of the scooter. So it kind of disappears and makes kind of a seamless transition from the leg shields to the glove box. And it's quite a stellar look. It takes a lot more effort to paint the trim. Uh, every once in a while we'll paint a small batch of this trim because we've had many other builds that we've done a custom colored uh, trim. I've also painted it in green. I've painted them in gloss red. You know, it paints very well. Unfortunately, it's a little fragile if you're going to bump the scooter into something. The whole idea of the trim is it kind of protects the edge of the, the bodywork of the scooter, but it definitely gives it a very custom look when you have that trim painted. So again, on the left side, I'm going to start low and work my way up because that's where all the magic is. Uh, Bolt-on side stand comes in chrome, and part number on that is GT10C, and we have that available for all years of the GT, GTS, Super, all that. Uh, easy bolt-on option, you add a little chrome. Again, the, sides, the center stand's a custom chrome part. Belt cover is custom chromed. Uh, these are bolt-on, uh, machined, and chrome-plated parts. They have a unique finish that you can see the machining marks in the chrome. Same with the oil fill cap. Um, the gear oil and all the fasteners have been chromed as well. On the rear, you can see it's pretty much the same effect as the front brake caliper. It's been completely chromed as well. 
So starting with the lights on the scooter, it's got the matching uh, rear turn signal kit, the European turn signal kit, MI203, and they have red LED running lights in them in addition to the amber turn signals. The, the standard factory tail light, you know, on 2015 later, comes with a chrome trim as a factory part, and the LEDs have replaced the standard incandescent bulbs that are in that tail light. Uh, we have our license plate frame on there. Uh, we've made this license plate frame for several years, and just recently we've ordered them in black and chrome. So it accents the scooter very well, having the black and chrome license frame on there. Going up higher, this scooter is unique. It has a top case that was um, used on the GTSs and GT200s uh, 2013 and prior. This top case is no longer available. We have a limited supply of these top cases. They're still very popular, uh, mainly because they have these lenses in there and there's an LED kit that works with the lenses and that's why they're quite popular. And that's the add more light part that they made for the original top case. Unfortunately, the newer style top cases, functionally they're identical to these older top cases, but they do not have those lenses where you can add the light kit to them. We also installed the matching uh, uh, backrest pad with the white piping. And it's got the chrome flat rack that uh, the top case mounts to. This top case is kits that are designed for all the Vespas. Also will work with the folding racks that are found on the GTV and the GTS scooters. The Supers only have a grab rail, so you need to replace the grab rail with a flat rack to install any of the factory top cases, or any top case um, if you're going to go with something other than the factory painted top case. We've gone so far as uh, repainting these top cases, the limited uh, supply we have for some of our customers who've wanted the older style top case for their newer uh, scooter in a color they didn't, didn't didn't make back in the day when these top cases were out. You can see the red backlighting on the Supers and the white kind of accents all the other colors used on the scooter very well. Starting down here, there's our switch for the spotlights. It's a push on off red light. It's got the USB charging jack. It's got the metal chrome-plated machined uh, baggage hook. And I added a little bit to this bike. This part number is KC33, and they come in a variety of different colors. Oftentimes, the original Vespa rubber key, as it wears, will start looking pretty dirty, and sometimes the keyhole will be pulled out, and we sell this key cover that will cover up your ugly-looking key and kind of give it a new look. You gotta keep in mind these original immobilizer keys are quite expensive, so they're worth um, protecting and keeping for the life of the scooter. Also threw in the cool little keychain. A little light in there. I think part number on this is KC34. Uh, going up higher, we got the Ram mount, a very, very popular option. I would say 75% of the Vespas going out the door usually get the Ram mount installed. So here's a phone mounted in the um, in the RAM mount. Oh, oh, there's the bike we're talking about. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram. Uh, our Instagram tag is Vespa Motorsport, or you can follow me, Robot Vespa, on Instagram as well. Both uh, Vespa Motorsport and Robot Vespa have lots of photos of the current projects we have going on here. Always fun to follow. Plus, I'm a big Vespa fan on the side. I don't know how I do it. Work here all day and then I go look at Vespas when I go home. Not sure what my problem is. <laughs> All right, robot, buddy boy, time has come. Oh, I want to talk about this bike a little bit more. I know you could go on for hours oh. and hours talking about the wonderfulness <laughs> of this bike, and I love listening to you, but guess what? They're here to take it away. Oh. Literally, they just pulled oh. up. So we got to had the opportunity to give it a test ride. There you and go. I had the grateful opportunity to build the bike.
it's going to be awesome. It's just beautiful. He's going to be so happy. Chris has been so wound up about this thing. He's been super patient with us because he knows these kind of builds take a long time. Uh, we would hope to get it out a little bit earlier for him. Uh, I guess he had a couple rides coming up back there. But again, he's been super patient and we love working with people that are patient <laughs> and very grateful for all the work that we do. So to Chris, this one's for you, buddy. Uh, we're going to start loading her up and uh, you should have her in about seven to 10 days. So all get right. excited. Let's go, I'll get the doors. <laughs> Any last words you want to say to Chris, the rest of the audience out there? I don't know, maybe I'll see the bike again on a rally. I've seen a lot of my bikes over the years. What was your other idea? Was it to take a bike and do the entire chrome on the on the body of the bike? Oh yeah, it's definitely possible, you know, with the steel frame. If anybody uh, wants and... to take on the challenge, let us know. We'd like to do a all chrome bike for you. We can get you a quote, might be kind of fun. <laughs> I'm kind of kidding, but I'm kind of serious at the same time. All right, let's let these fine gentlemen get this thing. Best Motor Sport signing off. We'll see you next time.